This chapter reviews what you've learned in Chapter 3 by taking you systematically through the generator warning light and starter circuits. Additionally, you will also have the opportunity to explore the diagram. The starter and generator circuit will animate in stages, allowing you to follow the route. To simplify things a little, we've removed some of the other components from the diagram. Starting at the battery, current flows to the filament splice J1 via the red 6mm cable. From this point, it continues into the control unit A1 at pin 1 of connector plug 5. The circuit exits the control unit at pin 5 of plug 2. Here, the cable continues down to terminal 30 of the ignition switch. Turning the switch to position 2, ignition on, supplies live to terminal 15. From here, the circuit continues into the control unit. Current can then flow in two directions, to the right or to the left, and to the generator lamp. The lamp circuit is completed to ground via the generator's windings, which causes the lamp to light. Now let's follow the starter circuit, beginning at the ignition switch. Turning the switch to position 3 causes terminal 50 to become live. Current from this point flows to the control unit. From the control unit, current exits at pin 3 and then goes to terminal 50 of the starter motor. This energizes the solenoid and activates the motor. This virtual diagram is designed to let you explore freely the starter and generator circuits, enabling you to revise any of the subjects covered so far. You can navigate around the diagram as you like and click on any of the highlighted components to receive an explanation. The navigation tool will help you to move around. Main components are represented by a broken line. You can find out what the component is by using the legend. For example, this is a control unit. The wavy line at the end of the box means the component is not shown in its entirety and continues elsewhere. This is the symbol for a multi-pin connector plug joining two sections of wiring together. As with other connectors, the short straight line represents the pin whilst the semicircle indicates the socket. This is the symbol for the generator charge warning lamp. This is the symbol for a fuse. In this example, the fuse is shown within the main component, so it signifies that it's on the actual component and it's replaceable. The fuse is rating. Now see if you can answer some questions relating to the subjects covered so far. Look through the diagram and click on the symbol that denotes a fuse. Yes, that's right, well done. Which one of these symbols denotes a bolt-type connection? Yes, that's correct, well done. Look through the diagram and click on a 2.5mm black cable with a red tracer. Yes, that's correct. Well done. This section of the generic wiring diagram shows the circuit for an outside air temperature display. The circuit comprises an electronic control unit together with its sensor and display. This is the symbol for a transistor, which identifies an electronic control unit. In fact, this symbol is used to denote any component that incorporates semiconductor devices. Sometimes the electronic control unit is part of another component, as in this example, where it's within the vehicle's instrument cluster, designation A2. On occasions, other devices may be shown within the component's boundary line. Here, for instance, the outside temperature display, P1, is attached to the electronic control unit, reinforcing the fact that this control unit has other components connected to it. In operation, it's the control unit which is responsible for producing the values shown on the temperature display. 
To calculate the reading, the control unit receives input data from the outside temperature sensor. It's connected to the control unit by two cables at terminals 1 and 2 of the connector plug. The outside temperature sensor is simply a temperature-related variable resistor located in a suitable place on the vehicle. Find the sensor on the diagram and then click on it. Yes, that's correct. The symbol is that for a variable resistor. The rectangle signifies a resistor and the arrow indicates its value is variable. Similar symbols classify other types of resistors. Here are some examples. Click on each symbol for an explanation. This character represents temperature, which means this component is also a temperature-related resistor. You'll find this character on other temperature-related components. Here's another variable resistance symbol. It's often used to represent the fuel tank float unit that operates the gauge. This symbol indicates a fixed value resistor. In this example, it's connected in series with an LED. In this chapter, you're going to study a circuit using a simple switch to control a solenoid valve. Being able to determine a switch's intended operation from the diagram is invaluable when diagnosing faults. The complete generic diagram contains a number of switches, but we'll start with component S2. It contains two items, but for the moment we'll consider only the switch. This part of the symbol represents the contacts and shows the position in which they normally rest. In this example, the contacts are open until the switch is operated. In this section, you can find out about some of the elements of the switch symbols. These contacts rest in the closed position until the switch is operated. This part of the symbol indicates whether the switch is locking or non-locking. An indentation or two lines, depending upon the vehicle, signifies locking. This means that the switch can rest in either position. A single line or an arrow classifies spring-loaded, meaning that the switch will automatically return to its original position. The end part of the symbol indicates the type of operation. These symbols vary depending upon whether the diagram relates to a CV or PC vehicle. Here are some examples of symbols for the type of operation. Click on each one in turn to find out what they are. Either of these symbols indicates temperature operated. Either of these symbols indicates mechanically operated. Either of these symbols indicates manually operated.